Final Cut Pro on the iPad version 1.3 just dropped, so I wanted to take a quick moment to show you some of the new features that are here that you can take advantage of right now. The first feature you'll find just here directly at the top of your screen, it's this little microphone, and that is the addition of having a voiceover tool. When you tap on that, you'll notice that it brings up a voiceover tool here on the right hand side. To record a voiceover, all you need to do is come down and press the big red record button. However, there's a few options you may want to take a look at before you start recording. Going to the top, you can click on these three meatballs, and in here you can see the audio levels, which I'm peaking a little bit. You can see what input I am using, so right now I'm using the iPad microphone. If I had a USB-C mic, I could connect that directly into the iPad and use that instead, which I highly recommend if you want the best quality audio. Underneath that is your input gain, which we could go ahead and drop down because I am peaking. Then underneath that is our meter. So over here on the right side, you'll see we have our meter bouncing up and down. I can go ahead and disable that. And now all I see is the record button. There is a countdown. So when I press record, it's going to count down for me. I'll go ahead and leave that enabled. You can also select to mute the timeline while you're recording your audio. This is super handy if you're not working with headphones, you can go ahead and leave that enabled. And finally, there's this really cool option to pre-record buff. And what this does is it captures four seconds of audio before you press the record button. This is going to be super handy just in case you accidentally had something absolutely golden happen before you press the record button. Now that I'm ready to record, I'll just come down to the bottom and press the big red record button. This is voiceover telling you that you really should subscribe to my channel. And scrolling down in our timeline, we can see that recording right here, and we can treat that just like any other audio file on the timeline. Next on the list is they've added new content into the titles and background. I don't have time to get into all of them, but some of them are stuff like this essential generator. So it's a nice little countdown you can use in your videos. We have all of these different pattern backgrounds, and if you want to, you can download all of these at the same time just by clicking on the little cloud icon in the top right hand corner. Next on the list is the ability Ability to create secondary storylines inside of Final Cut Pro on the iPad. You can see I have these B-roll clips above in my timeline. All I need to do is tap and drag over the clips I want to add and do a secondary storyline, then tap and hold, which will give me this secondary dialogue menu. And from there, we can select group. You can also achieve this with Command G if you have the keyboard extension. From there, you can see we have a secondary storyline just like what's found over on the Mac. It's added these gap clips in between so all of our clips have the proper spacing. And if you wanna move all of these clips at the same time, just tap and drag on that secondary storyline and you can move these all together. This is a super helpful and essential feature so I'm really happy to see it over here on the iPad, making the iPad version one step closer to the Mac. Another great feature is the ability to enable or disable camera stabilization inside of the camera app found inside of Final Cut Pro on the iPad. To get there, just go on up into your camera, then inside of the camera, go to the bottom left where you'll see the gear icon. Selecting that, you'll notice this new additional option for stabilization. Go ahead and enable or disable that depending on what you want for your videos. And finally, the last great addition is a whole bunch of new keyboard shortcuts have made their way into the iPad version. I don't have time to get into all of these, so I'll go ahead and leave a link down below with a list of keyboard shortcuts that you can jump to should you need it for Final Cut Pro on the iPad. So what do you think of these updates? Does this make Final Cut Pro for the iPad one step closer to what you need to use this on a daily basis? Or do you still find that it doesn't quite meet your needs as a creator? I would love to find out down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, consider press that like button as it does help tremendously. And you may wanna check out this video where I do a complete guide for Final Cut Pro on the iPad. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.